U.S. investigators opened a hearing on Wednesday into the crash of an Asiana flight earlier this year at San Francisco's airport. Three people died when the plane landed short of the runway. During the one-day one hearing, which is still going on, executives from both Boeing and Asiana Airlines were questioned about who or what was to blame. Was it the plane, the pilot, the training, or some combination of the three? CCTV's Nathan King reports from Washington's Reagan National Airport. Elaine, on thousands of flights every day, autopilot systems help keep planes in the air and have made them safer to travel in than by car. But U.S. authorities say on that fateful flight from Seoul to San Francisco, pilot confusion about those very systems could have led to a fateful error. Too low and too slow. The dramatic video of Asiana Flight 214 shows just how the accident happened. But up until now, we've been waiting for why it happened and who is to blame. As the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board opened the hearing into the crash, a detailed report released from the authority says the pilot admitted he was very nervous, had no experience landing this type of plane in San Francisco, and may have thought the automatic throttle system was fully engaged when it wasn't. That system is designed to maintain the plane's speed. As a result, the 777 was coming in far too slow, 103 knots rather than the recommended 137. According to the NTSB, there was alarm but inaction, as training pilot Lee Kang Cook did not respond to a last second call to abort the landing. Are there certain phases of flight where airspeed is going to be a do or die situation? Absolutely. In the, in the case of a final approach, we assume that is an area where the, the, the crew is actively monitoring the critical flight parameters, and there's no more critical flight parameters than glide path and airspeed. The NTSB also said the pilot was worried about attempting a visual approach at the San Francisco airport since the runway's automatic warning systems were out of service because of construction. The technology normally helps a pilot land. However, at the hearing, Asiana A-Line executives said all pilots have sufficient training for such a landing. Asiana provides training for a visual approach and through recurrent training, which occurs every six months. We are providing more than 10 types of landing training. The pilots also have to pass the strict requirements set by Boeing. Looking into the emergency response after the crash, U.S. authorities emphasized that 288 passengers and the crew survived the crash. Three died. One was 16-year-old Chinese student Yi Meng Wan, who was killed after the crash when a fire truck rushing to the scene ran over her. We have improved radio interoperability between ARF and mutual aid resources. We are developing strategies to lessen the potential for firefighting vehicles impacting accident victims. The Asiana crash was the first fatal air crash on U.S. soil in four and a half years, but comes as the U.S. Federal Aviation Authority warns that pilots are becoming too dependent on automatic systems. At, at the very least, the pilot just needs to fly the airplane, and in some instances, these air crews, the pilots get carried away, they get bogged down in the switchology, the automation of it, and they fail just to fly the airplane. The evidence presented here in Washington won't be used to point the finger of blame at any one individual or company, but could be used in court further down the road by Boeing, Asiana, or the victims of the crash. And hopefully, Elaine, that some of the evidence presented could help prevent further crashes in the future. Back to you.